Welcome to Rock and Roll Fridays, a podcast on musical encounters and life. Yep. Okay, cool. Welcome to Rock and Roll Fridays. I'm so happy to be back this week, and I'm so excited to have a special guest from the Bay Area, Alan Forbes. Alan is an artist and designer in the music world. I'm sure uh, many of my Listeners have seen his work. He's developed a signature icon for the Black Crows, as well as posters, logos, album covers, artwork for Queens of the Stone Age, Rage Against the Machine, The Offspring, White Stripes, Dinosaur Jr., The Misfits, and more. And he currently lives in San Francisco, a great city, a great musical city. So welcome, Alan Forbes, to Rock and Roll Fridays. Thanks, man. Awesome. So glad to have you. Yeah. yeah. So you, you've done a lot for a lot of bands. Um, pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. There's, there's actually lately it's been, maybe it's just COVID or something like that. Yeah. But I'm, people are DMing me posters that I literally forgot that I did. <laughs> like, I was like, God, that kind of looks like my stuff. And I blow it up on my phone and I'm like, Oh, I totally don't remember doing that. Yeah. You know? Well, that's either, that's when you know you've had a really good time one night or you are just getting older. <laughs> uh, I think a, a combination of like when I lived, when I first got to San Francisco, I totally played the fucking artist role to no end. Right. I was just like, man, I'm just going to do posters and draw and go out and drink and print. Yeah. And I did that and I'm like, you know, there's this weird thing called responsibility and rent, you know? <laughs> and so well, you come around and then you like, you start building a career. Yeah, yeah. Like this also, is also, also a thing called health, Alan. <laughs> yeah. Well, health is another one. That, you know, it's funny. I was like, I was like, I'm 52 right now, and I was like, I cannot believe being in the music industry for as long, since I was 18 years old. Yeah. Being in the music industry that I've made it this far because if it was the 70s, there's no way. <laughs> right. 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 The amount of my past excess provides like more insights to what I'm doing now, but it's, those are experiences I would never change. Yeah. Yeah. How did you get into designing for bands and for posters specifically? Um, well, when I was a little kid, I used to help friends out with like punk rock flyers in Los Angeles. I lived down there for a little while when I was younger. Yeah. And then, uh, and then all of a sudden I was just like, this is all I want to do for a living. And I had a job at Tower Records and then I got this offer to do a EP cover for a band called the Four Horsemen who were on Deaf American. And then after I finished that, along came this other band, the Black Crows. Never heard, never heard of them. <laughs> yeah. And I, was like, and I looked at it and at the time, and this is much to their credit, yeah. at that time, you know, Nirvana and all these other bands were just massive. Right. Black Crows come along and somehow slip through the cracks of this and make their own statement. Yep. You know? Well, uh, that, during, during oh, a time, it was definitely during a time where the music was had already shifted and then this band comes along that plays rock and roll and kind of that 70s, oh, they, they, you know, and, rock style. You know, yeah, we're all well versed in the fact that that record, what I love about that record in particular is that Otis Redding is one of my favorite singers, so they covered that. But then it reminded me of like of Faces records. I mean, we all wear influences on our sleeve, myself more than included. Um, but at that record, I was like, oh God, I haven't heard something like this in years, you know, that didn't involve the word poison or something like that, you know? Right. Because in LA, there was a lot of that, a lot of the uh, glam metal stuff was still going on to, to, a, to a fading extent. How did you how did you hook up with the Black Crows to to get to the the, oh. the art and creativity end of the relationship? My friend Dave, his girlfriend Shelly was a receptionist when Rick Rubin moved out and changed his offices from Def Jam to Def American out in Hollywood. And they just came across to me one day after doing that Four Horsemen one, and they were like, "There's this other band, the Black Crows," and I heard it and I was like, "Oh, rag, oh, I can do it," and then. I was doing it, and then one day I'm at, at my house in Hollywood, and I turn on my MTV, and there I see my drawing on there of the two cartoon crows. I'm like, oh, this might be big. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. my life might yeah. change a little bit. Yeah, it, it didn't change that much because I was like, 
all right, now I'm going to draw for a living, not realizing that because you get one job doesn't mean you're going to get a hundred. Right. You know? So I ended up doing stuff for like a merch design company with just about every band that's not around anymore. <laughs> you know? How much, how much input did the crows and do bands have on your work when you're working for well, either, either an icon or a poster? How, how much interplay do you have with the band? Uh, all I do is like, well, with Chris in particular, what I used to do is like, he'd just be like, here, I have this idea. And he's like, just draw it. I don't need to see a sketch, you know? Yeah. Very level and very understanding about that. When it came and, to a the le- and a level of trust with you and your work and and his his bands and his vision, I guess, you know. Uh, yeah, well, you know, the Black Wolf is very different than CRV, you know, right. as far right. as imagery goes, you know. There was there was one point in time though where I was like, you know what, I can probably I've probably drawn over easily 200 cartoon crows, you know? <laughs> right. And I was like, well, and then when he started the solo stuff, it, I had even more freedom. It got to the point where I was just drawing something like, here's the poster, here's the t-shirt, you know, be complete trust in it. Not without the ideas that a brief idea of something that came before. Right, right. Like a creative concept or a vision or an idea. And then you kind of. Yeah, write. you know, because, you know, with the Black Crows, they're, they're a weird hybrid of the psychedelic and pure rock and roll. Yeah. You know, that's that's where the hybrid happens and it works. And then with Chris's solo stuff, completely different subject. It's more explorative as as an individual branching out on their own. Right. You know? Yep. What about what about some other bands that, that you've worked with and how oh, well, how does well, that differ maybe if you're working, you know, in, in a lesser capacity with a band compared to having maybe a deeper relationship like you had with Chris Robinson and the Black yeah, Crows. Well, yeah, you know, I've always, there's this one band that I was always a fan of, this band called Earth from Seattle. And, uh, mostly instrumental. Mm-hmm. Um, this guy, Dylan Carlson, and this, this other girl, Adrian. And I always wanted to work for them. And I'll bring up another person after this. But um, one day I got an email and I was like, am I really getting an email from Dylan Carlson? Because like, that's one of my favorite bands and like, but it happened at a time where I felt like I was ready to do it. Right. If I was younger, I would have created something that I wasn't, I would be proud of it at the time, but in retrospect would not want that as an earth poster. Right. They give me, they actually say nothing about art direction whatsoever. Like complete trust in whatever I'm going to do, you know, and it, it like, and it's been some, been some of my favorite posters after Black Crows and CRB, you know, all that work and all the referencing I did brought me into this other plane. And then when I was able to work for Earth, I was able to sit through their re- instrumental records and just be meditative. Right, right. And, and, and Alan, I mean, a little bit of patience, you know? <laughs> yeah. And Alan, I think, I think very much like vinyl, I think yeah. there's a lot of people that don't, that it's like, Think there's two kinds of people there's people that love music and really love music and then there's people that listen to music right and i think the people that listen to music don't understand why people collect vinyl or collect concert posters right like yeah it's like you talk- just said there's like there's people that can listen to music and people that collect vinyl and then there's that other group that just like the idea of into music even though they might not right right you know yeah I mean, who can't have a conversation about the Grateful Dead, even if you're a complete stranger to it, because they've been around and they're so famous for so long. You know, and that's where, you know, you, you can't, so I used to fault the people. I was like, how do you not know this already? You know? <laughs> and, but then you, know, you get older and you come to this understanding. It's like everybody has their own experience. Right, right. With it. In this day and age, though, with what I'm stoked about is like that there is more vinyl coming out than ever before absolutely i mean you i'm i mean even you just if you look at the the just the local the local stores i mean we have in our town it's it's the discovery of music just isn't digitally 
you know like yeah, yeah. You, can, you can discover stuff on vinyl that for four dollars you might pick up a record and take a flyer and discover yeah. something yeah it's like what i do like about the reissues that they're putting out there's a lot of records that were out of print that you can buy now right you know like a lot of stuff that's just sitting somewhere and it's never been reissued and then they put out these reissues of these elaborate albums and it's just like wow it was like a huge plus and i've seen more of that during covid you know i don't what, know how much the live stream stuff you know yeah what is it about i mean there's a market for you know there's a market for everything but especially in yeah. music right i mean from concert ticket stubs to and especially oh, yeah. posters what yeah when did you see and start to realize that you know, poster design and poster collectibles and fans purchasing, you know, purchasing posters was a, was a market where, you yeah, know, not only could you make a living off of it, but people really wanted to have certain images and, and bands yeah. posters. Yeah. So the poster thing here is like, I used to, I used to print downtown with my buddy and, uh, I would do, we had a lot, at the time, we had a lot of local bars where they had a lot of like garage bands from Seattle and bands like that. And so I would just do like, I would print up like 50 posters, bring a couple to the band and they'd let me sell them there. And I'd do that like three nights a week. And then I started realizing, I'm like, this is actually paying my rent and it's paying for my food and whatever place I'm selling at is paying for whatever drinks I'm having that night. Right. And if there, if there was food at the place, you're getting free food. So it was kind of like a work win thing for me. And then as the market, then I started noticing the bigger bands taking notice of the posters. Because all these people, all these merch companies, at the end of the day, they want to make money. Yeah. And silk screen posters is a huge way to do that. You know, just as long as well, I did, I have noticed in the past few years, they kind of overdo it. You know, there's certain bands that just don't sell. But then there's other bands that it'll go through the roof, you know? Right. Like the past oh. few years, I've been doing posters for Patti Smith. And uh, I've done like all in California. And it's amazing. Like you'll, I had, she last time she played, it was two nights in Santa Cruz. I went down there with my friend and collaborator, Caitlin. And uh, we had done a poster for her. We sold 140 posters in two nights at a small venue. That's amazing. It was incredible. I've never seen that outside of like CRB. It took a minute, but once people started accepting the imagery and accepting what was going on, the posters would sell no problem. Right. Well, you but know? also that's the the following of the band, right? Where it's it part of the experience of going to a show. And you know, I lived in San Francisco. Part of the experience yeah. of going to the famous Fillmore was being oh, yeah. being the first one out of the show, so you could grab a poster right like you can grab one of those posters yeah you know and uh you know during when i was doing a lot of the garage shows here in san francisco that was during a time during a period of time when i took a long break from reconnecting with the black bros and i i had done one for the film and that's how i reconnected with them again and worked for them for another few years but i was like i was doing so much different kinds of artwork in between that i was happy Mm-hmm. You know? What other and bands so what other bands were you a lot of freedom? What other bands were you working with during that kind of oh, period? God. It was uh God, uh bands like Mono Men, The Makers, uh gosh, Jesus Lizard, uh Melvins, uh Turbo Negro, like a lot of those weird bands that would play this club. Yeah. Because because every show was an adventure. <laughs> something was guaranteed to happen every single show so you're getting there you're making money you're experiencing some kind of habit and then you get to go home and go to sleep <laughs> <You know? laughs> well what's it feel like to know that like i mean you know you look behind me i've got yeah. your you know your artwork on my yeah. wall you know this is an alan forbes yeah it's but, so but 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 so really dumb. i was gonna say what's it feel like to know that this is really a memory right this is a show i went to at 
Yeah. Von Helm's barn in Woodstock, yeah. the Black yeah. Friends played Levon's shed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's really about the memories when you have a piece of artwork. Um, and it is art. Like, I, I hate when people yeah. say concert poster or whatever. It's artwork. Sure. We, we could talk about your process, but what's it feel like to know that there's fans throughout the country that have your work up on their walls every day? It's outrageous. And I'm like, it's for me, it's outrageous because I'm very not, I'm not too much, uh, I rarely do any interviews. And I think like, I think like the one thing I am proud of is like when I see that on your wall, it makes me proud of like all the work that I've done to this point. Because yeah. for me, even good or bad, every single poster that I've done, which I have to say 90% are good experiences. But every poster that I've done, I was like, wow, this is on somebody's wall. And I was like, look at the impact you've made. But I know what I'm, I know I'm good at what I do, but I, I'm always been a firm believer that the artwork has to speak before the person. Well, I mean, it's funny you say that because, you know, I work in marketing and advertising and I work with a lot of creative people and yeah. you can't talk your way into being a good creative person. Your work, oh, your work speaks for yeah. itself, yeah. good or bad. Yeah. yeah. You know, like, like, uh, like for me, I know, like, the, the one thing is like breaking out of the identity of being tied to only one thing. Yeah. So when you come out with all different stuff and people are kind of taken back for a minute, you know, they're like, oh, what's the, where'd this come from? You know, and how's this happening? Like during COVID, I've been doing paintings with no figurative images on it whatsoever. All it is is pieces of wood with various colors. Awesome. So it's, it's teaching me patience and in a meditative state to be like, to get to when this thing, whole thing ends and I start to do it, I'm probably going to have way more patience than I did before dealing with people. Mm -hmm. being, not to be too accommodating, but, you know, I'm, not, I'm actually really proud of when people send me photos, which happens all the time lately on Instagram. I'll see photos of like stuff and I'm like, it's on their wall. And I'm like, oh, that's really rad. You know, that's pretty cool. Well, I, mean, I love it. You know I, that I, I built a legacy without actually realizing it until the past couple of years. You know, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to teach your horn too much, Alan, but yeah, I have a, a giant Chris brother, or Chris Robinson brotherhood Fillmore poster. Oh yeah. That massive the, one. The massive one to the left. The one where he's holding up the cloud, holding up the lettering. Yes, which is the, and, the whole and, forest like belong. I, and I realized when I was going to talk to you, I looked at it because um, I, I kind of had a, a VIP experience at the Fillmore yeah. with the band. Yeah. And I was like, oh, Alan's signature is at the bottom, just real small. Yeah. And the, oh, I was yeah. like, that's pretty cool. It is a it is a big poster um, for sure. Yeah. And I don't uh, in the past number of years, I decided to stop putting my initials on any poster. I'll sign them. But I was like, I the one thing is with me and the career that I've built, I was like, if they don't know by now, <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. That could, be a little, that could be a little bit of ego. Yeah. What's, what's your advice for designers and creatives kind of work, you, you like younger people working in the industry around, you know, not just music, but just creativity and trying to, um, you know, because every garage band, right? They hire their friend or they, yeah, they have someone yeah. in the band create their brand and their yeah, logo. Yeah. What, what's um, your advice to those type of people? What I would suggest in all the years, and I've, I've been, like I said, in the music industry for quite some time, but I would highly suggest that if you're just, if you're starting to do posters, and this is from my own experience, don't let one successful poster mean that you're going to have 20 more. Do is like if you can help it, take their art direction, but don't let anybody in the music industry guide you away from like what you truly like to do because that's what that's what they're hiring you for. Right. They're hiring for your vision. And once they start changing that, it's taking away. You're like, well, you hired me for me. You're not. So this is what I'm capable of. That's why you hired me, but you're directing me into an area of this. And the music business is, is pretty brutal. You know, you don't know things until sometimes it's too late, but you also can't let 
no matter how big the band is, don't let them take advantage of you. Don't let them take advantage of your own personal art direction. Right, right. Or you just become an order taker, right? That's I mean, it. You might as well be working. You might as well. My equivalent would be like you're just you're at a typewriter, like dic right. taking dictation from whatever they want. So when, when you're, I've had to do it since during COVID and it frustrates me to no end. When, you you're, people, when you're working, what what are you listening to? Like, do you listen to certain types of music? Do you listen to the oh, band yeah. that you're working on? Like what what's your creative process, if you will, when you're kind of creating uh, work? Yeah, as far as music, I go through a whole gamut because I, I, I do have Spotify. So when I'm working. <laughs> uh oh. You know, that's the algorithm. You're down the rabbit hole, Alan. I am. I am. I, I know it now too. You know. Yeah, yeah. But with you know, I can put on like a whole Earth record, which is about forty-five minutes to an hour. You know, and uh, you just listen to these long songs. Then I can put on something like uh, a John Coltrane Ascension record, which is just maniacal wild jazz. Yeah. And then I can go to the Grateful Dead. One of my big ones that I always go to is Grateful Dead's Working Man's Dead. Yeah, classic. Yeah. It's a classic rock, a great classic pure rock record. Yep. You know, and uh, and then I'll go to like, then I, I always, it never fails that I go to Patti Smith, uh, Patti Smith, and some Jackson C. Frank lately, you know, and, uh, and then I start discovering just weird jazz stuff, like Keith Jarrett or something like that. Like just him and a piano, which I also love to work to. It just depends on my mood. Yeah, yeah. I'm always in a great mood, but you know, during COVID, you don't want to put on anything that tends you to lead too much to the dark side. <laughs> right. <laughs> like no, no, uh, no, 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 Alan, my friend and I, we were talking, we're like, during COVID, don't listen to any music that makes you think about anything, anything deeper than what's already going on in your life. <laughs> I know, that's why, that's why, like, like, I was, at, during, when, when this whole thing started, I noticed I had a repeating pattern of Neil Young's On the Beach on. And I was like, I got to take this off. Right. It's a great record, but I don't want COVID to ruin it for me. There should be a non-COVID list for music yeah. for you. <laughs> yeah, there should be a disclaimer. <laughs> I wish they put, with all the algorithms, I wish they'd put on like, hey, you know, COVID's going on. Maybe this isn't the best record right now. Um, I, I need to ask you, where, yeah. where can people see and purchase your work? Where's the best place? Oh, um, it's uh, secretserpents.com. Yep, secretserpents.com. Yeah, and if you just simply want to look up my artwork, my Instagram's at Alan Forbes. Awesome. So at yeah. Alan Forbes on Instagram and secretserpents.com. Um, and I'm on Facebook just under Alan Forbes. And uh, obviously you can Google Alan Forbes as well. Um, Mr. Yeah. Google, we will find you. Um, so yeah. as the premise of my show is yeah. um, awesome meet and greets, and I'm sure you working in the music business, um, working with bands, uh, probably have tons of story stories but is there one or two that really stand out where you were like holy shit how am i in this moment and uh i can't believe i'm hanging out with this band or this person um it was patty smith cool, cool to tell it was patty smith by far yeah like she was coming up and talking to me like when i first did a poster for her and it was like and then i did a 40th anniversary of her horses album and she's like where were you back then you know that's awesome and the one thing about her which I was not surprised about, but I was like, I went, at the end of the night, I always take money and give the band, like, pick out some cash for the bands. And she's like, I just want 10 to 12 posters. She's like, you keep all the cash because you're an artist. Take it back to San Francisco and pay your rent or do whatever you're going to do with it, you know? That's so awesome. one of those, that was a huge highlight. And then uh, I was talking about Earth and I was at one, I was at the last live show I saw them play was at Great American and I'd done a poster and at the end of the show, this has really never happened outside of Patti Smith. She did one, but um, Dylan gets on stage. He's like, Alan Forbes did my favorite poster. And I was totally like, wow. Because I just appreciate the amount of effort and all the years that survivors do to make sure their creativity stays intact. Yeah. 
And I talk about this a lot on my podcast. When you meet your people and, yeah. they're, and they're cool, yeah. it, just, it just transforms the experience even that much more so. Like, and I talk about it, every artist that I love that I've met and yeah. they were cool. And, yeah. and I like to think that I have a certain level of chill and not yeah. right, not craziness. They know I'm not yeah. crazy. You're too crazy. Yeah. And it's, it's, they know that you're a fan because you're there supporting their work and they're, yeah. you know, in your case, you're helping their work, um, which is really awesome. Yeah. I thought for me, like with Patty Smith in particular, I thought, uh, I always, and I've, I've said this before, I was like, man, have I peaked? <laughs> that, that was the one that was on the top of my bucket list. Yeah. You're too you know? young to peak, Alan. You still got a yeah, yeah, to go. Yeah, no. I'm still only a half a century old. Well, <laughs> you, you know when you peaked is when the phone stops ringing, right? When the band stopped calling. That's when you know, you know. Yeah. That's when you're like, I better start painting and try and sell them in New York, you know? <laughs> but yeah, I, like with COVID, I'm starting to notice with this change, change, thing changing, I've gotten two record covers recently to do. And, but it's mostly been a lot of t-shirt designs, you know? Yeah. Well, the, and the bands are, you know, the bands also, because they're not touring, right? The merchandise aspect is, I'm seeing it just more and more that bands are pushing merchandise and it's they are more than ever like what i feel bad about is these bands that were just getting really popular and people are starting to hear their music and then this happens you know they can't tour they can't even go to the local bar and play a show right you know yeah somehow, somehow the stronger ones that are more dedicated i've noticed and maybe it's just instagram but more than ones i've saw them that have true dedication to what they're doing are making ways to make this work Right. And most of it's merch. Do you, you know? One, one final question before yeah. I let you go. Yeah. Do you have a favorite poster design that you've done in all the designs? And you've probably done thousands, right? If, if the numbers has to be in the thousands at this point in your career, right? I tried adding it up and I think it's over 4,000. Do you have one that's like... I have three that run a tie. One is a Patty Smith poster that I did with my friend and collaborator, Caitlin Madison, whose work is fantastic. One of, one of my favorite artists. Caitlin Madison? Then, Caitlin Madison. Okay. I, when, when I post collabs with us, I, I tag her on everything, but you should definitely check her artwork too, or people should. Awesome. That one, and then I did a Patty Smith 40th anniversary by myself. And then the last Earth one at Great American, God, two years ago. Those three all run an even tie with me. So I can't pick one. As far as like other posters though, like if you ask me my favorite CRB poster, it's probably, it's another one that I did with Caitlin and we did a tarot card series and one of them's the chariot. And that's one of my all time favorites too. For the Chris Robinson brotherhood. Yeah. yeah. And uh, the crows, there wasn't a huge amount of opportunities to really do a whole lot of involved posters. You know, you do them, but they just, it wasn't, you weren't doing as, you weren't exploring their creativity as much as this because they are more rock and roll bands. Right, right. To their credit, you know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, but yeah, I, that, that, that's what I would say. You that's know? awesome. Yeah. Uh, Alan, I appreciate it so much you being on well, and talk, so talking, much, talking creativity and talking yeah. about your art because, you know, as Patty Smith said, it really is art. I mean, that's why people like me hang your work on the wall. Like, I think, yeah. I think, I think people don't think about it deeply enough that, you know, yeah, if, no. if you take the time, like I do to frame yeah. something, pay for a frame, get it yeah. done, right. And hang it in your office to look at it every day. It's yeah. art. Yeah. And because you like the art and also you like the memory. Absolutely. Like you mentioned earlier. Absolutely. Alan, yeah. thank you so much. Thanks so much, man. And thanks for making the interview easy for me. <laughs> normally, normally I'm not good at it. <laughs> uh, so many stories to tell. All right, man. <laughs>